My very essence begins to wane. Sweet, sweet agony. Lead this to him. Come to deal the coup de gras. Good. <laughs> Watching you struggle against the inevitable is bad comedy. Erase me from existence, soul and all. you know that name? <laughs> then it was you, and Elpis, with them itself. Final pieces fall into place. <laughs> In my halcyon days, as the mortal Amon, I was haunted by a dream. Night after night, the faceless multitude, the voiceless cries. Shards of shattered memories. But slowly, the fog began to clear. This was Alpis. And I... I was Hermes. Recurring though it was, I paid this dream little heed. It was only when I was granted the seat and memories of Fan Daniel, that I knew these visions to be true. They were the memories of Hermes that he himself erased using the power of Kairos. <laughs> He succeeded only in searing them more deeply into his soul. My soul. Death failed to expunge them. No matter how many times it came. Rebirth after rebirth. From one Van Daniel to the next. I wonder. Is Emmet Selk adrift somewhere in this ethereal sea? In defeat, finally remembering your time together in Elpis. How it must gall him to be entrusted with knowledge of the final days, only to be rendered powerless to act upon it. So many lifetimes dedicated to restoring his beloved Amaro in blissful ignorance. Oh, folly. But make no mistake, my life as Hermes is not the reason I invited the world's end. I have lived. I have struggled. I have dredged the very depths of despair. And in the detritus of existence, I found the truth. I served a great ruler. Powerful beyond measure, the world his dominion. Yet even he and his vast empire were destined to fall, to become one with oblivion. 
At the end of life's journey lies only death. So I ask you, why live at all? We betray, we torment, we murder. We are wicked, spiteful creatures, without exception. If life is so sacred, so precious, why fill it with such misery? Man wallows in a hell of his own making without purpose or meaning. To live is to suffer, and I would end that suffering by my own hand. It matters not if it flies in the face of all believed right and just. Death is the only solution! That is my truth, my answer to the question, and yet... Even as the words pass my lips, I am filled with doubt, as my search reached its end. Was this the only way? After all these years, is this the answer I was hoping for? The lamentations of the damned. How it fixes to see your conviction falter at the last. Still clinging to existence, I see. You, who champion death so fervent, unwilling to accept your own, refusing to be purified and swept into the sea of souls. As do I. We prisoners to men, watching as the world turns. Though unlike me, you will be spared the ignorance of having your corpse made a puppet, danced to another's tune. Is that Arsahi? How very astute. But let me be clear, I have not come to consort with the likes of you. Nor have I come to bemoan the state of the world following my untimely demise. In fact, I delight in mankind's downfall and the anguish it brings the saviour of the savages. If I played some small part in the chaos, all the better. Not that I was in any position to resist. But to be made accomplice to the betrayal of Lord Xenos. I would die a thousand deaths to exact my vengeance. Now you are at my mercy. I shall drag us both into oblivion, and you will never see the fulfillment of your magnum opus. Even should you be reborn, your Desperate search for answers must start again.
Even here. Even now. You have every right to hate me. For the fool I was. For the monster I became. But I will not beg forgiveness. The tale of Hermes, the man who knew so much, yet understood so little, ends here. Don't try to follow me. I had more of you people than I could stomach in life. Never mind in death. Likewise, I pray we do not meet again. <laughs> you had better hope not. Come. Hydaelyn is waiting. Travelers, I welcome you. journey under Elpis. And now, the rivers of time converge. I know why you have come, yet I would hear you speak your reasons all the same. created the moon to deliver mankind from the final days. But is that really how it has to end? We do not wish to abandon this world. We want to protect the source and all of its shards. To flee is but one of two paths. The other leadeth to Meteon, far beyond the stars where she doth chant creation's requiem. Her domain is formed of dynamis, pure, absolute. Where emotion and memory govern all, ether will avail you naught. Meteon hath gathered the pain and despair of countless stars, and to go unprepared is to go unto your doom. We'll beat her. We'll win. I swear it. Is what I might have said once. After everything I've seen, all the times I've succumbed to my own anger and fear. I can no longer pretend that courage and faith will be enough. But are we truly so powerless that our only choice is to flee? Far from it, my child.
Long ago, the inhabitants of myriad stars, many more prosperous than the Theris, sought to free their worlds from life's woes. Sorrow and anger, conflict and hostility, despair, and even death itself. But as Meteon reported, every attempt ended in failure. Darkness abideth within every living being and can never be cast out. Neither reason nor faith can challenge this immutable truth. To live is to suffer. And in suffering, find strength and purpose and hope. As you have done so many times before. Thou dost pursue an impossible dream, yet knowing this, you pursue it nevertheless, and thou hast learned to depend on others as they do thee. Thy yearning for the power to save the powerless hath ever driven thee to greater heights. Thou hast grown strong. Though those closest to thee no longer walketh by thy side, their love remaineth thy guiding light. For duty's sake, thou hast been bound by truths unutterable time and time again. Yet thy heart hath never wavered, as thy companions will attest. In thy pursuit of mysteries great, all thou believest is brought into question. Undaunted, thy thirst for knowledge remaineth unquenched. The fires of hatred that once burned in thy heart burneth no more. From their ashes doth spring the light of love, warm and pure. As witness to black calamity, thou despaired at man's helplessness. Resolved, thou didst unite a distant world on the brink of collapse. And thou, my champion, when all did seem lost, thou never abandoned hope. For every trial and every foe that did bar thy way, thou hast proven equal to the challenge, drawing courage from the many bonds forged on thy journey. You have all known despair, and though the end approaches, you walk on, heads held high. Therein lieth your power, the strength to silence the song of oblivion. Then there is a means to confront her. Yes, if you should prove yourselves worthy. Hark! Nigh impossible is it to send mortals to the edge of the universe. Should you fail, there will be no second chance. As the will of the star, I ask of you this. Do you possess the fortitude to stand firm when all around you does crumble? Do 
you possess the faith to vanquish despair itself. Should you lack the strength to best a supreme deity, I cannot allow you to make the journey. You must leave this star and never return. Prepare yourselves. Prove ourselves worthy. Sounds straightforward enough. Aye. No room for confusion there. In any case, we've come too far to back down now. I am of the same mind. What power I have, I shall bring to bear. The three of you seem to be forgetting who we're up against. It's not every day we battle a divine being of untold power. Well, not quite every day. Do try not to get underfoot. Needless to say, there'll be no margin for error. Let us hold nothing back. For the people of this world and those beyond the rift! Alas, the question I pose to thee in Elpis hath remained unanswered these long years. I would hear thy response, warrior of light, shouldst thou emerge victorious. of my kind shall test thee. Come, prove thy worth. At last, man has the strength to... No! This can't be happening! Though my power is in constant flux, I have always kept a reserve for this very moment. It was a true test of your prowess. You have done well. There is one thing I must ask. By sundering the world into fourteen shards, the ether of all living beings too was divided. This reduction would in theory allow us to more easily interact with Dynamis. Having seen mankind brought to the very precipice of extinction, you wished for us to develop a means to overcome despair. You believed we had the potential and sundered all creation to see it fulfilled, to deliver us to that swirling maelstrom of Dynamis in which our foe hides and grant us the power to defeat her once and for all. Is this not true? It is as thou sayest. 
Twas the trial to which I subjected mankind, and it hath led to untold bloodshed and suffering. There was no kindness nor justice in the tragedy I wrought. When confronted with the almighty Zodiac, my only recourse was rend him and the world asunder, that his power be diminished for a time. And so it came to pass. Now you, my chosen, have surpassed my expectations, surpassed me. I entrust the fate of the universe unto you. This crystal contains the memory of Meteon's passage through the stars. Deliver it unto the Loperets. They will guide you to her. Though they may be capable of crossing great distances, there is a vast difference between traveling to the moon and the furthermost reaches of the great expanse. And unlike Meteon, we cannot simply soar on waves of dynamis to our destination. Indeed, to make such a journey would require an astronomical amount of ether. But a solution lieth close at hand. Of course. Yes, my child. Ever since I became the will of the star, the ether drawn here had slowly crystallized. They who have answered my call know it well. While I have remained hidden, it hath become the embodiment of the planet's will in my place. A faceless, omnipotent force of nature. The Mother Crystal. Our final hope. Alas. I can do no more. The fulfillment of this task doth fall to you, my chosen. Now, heed these words. Darkness and light, despair and hope. As goeth one, so goeth the other. Become light, become hope. I have a gift for thee. Come closer. Long have I searched for a means to safeguard the future of this star. Though I knew failure after failure, by recalling thy tales, and my promise to thee, I found the strength to carry on. Though the world is ever changing, thy thirst for adventure hath never waned. Thine unshakable resolve never ceases to amaze, to inspire. As a mark of my gratitude, I bestow this final gift. Thou dost possess the crystal of Azim, yes? Now 
as Hydaelyn, I reside over the forces of stasis, tranquility, peace. The laws which impart stability to existence itself. I will weave this self-same power into the crystal, granting thee mastery over matter, to give form to the formless. Use it wisely, for it will not last indefinitely. As thou hast seen on thy journey through the ethereal sea, souls are drawn to thee. Mayhap this trait will prove to be a boon rather than a hindrance. It is thy hopes and prayers that enable Asim's invocations and give them life. So keep them close. But pray, remember this. When the way forward is hidden, even from the mind's eye, look not to the invocation, but within yourself. These were the words of the crystal's original bearer. With that, my work is finished. Fulfill our promise. Right the wrongs committed when the world was yet whole. Silence the song of oblivion. Teach her a brighter melody. Show her our journey is far from over. It is I who should thank thee for all thou hast done and may yet accomplish. Long after I have gone, though not even my soul remaineth, my love will be with you forever, my dearest children.